Hey Merfolk fans, I'm Joe. Thanks very much for joining me today. I'm here with a replay of a match against Jeskai Control. Looking at the opening hands, uh, we see the opponent's got uh, three lands, two Path to Exiles, uh, Cryptic Command. They'll only need one more blue source to get that online, and by turn four, uh, it's certainly likely that they'll have that land available. Um, and we see they have Emrakul, uh, the Aeon's Torn, in their hands. So, I mean, no surprise. All Jeskai Control decks pretty much run uh, the Nahiri Emrakul win con at this point. Uh, I'm backing up, or I guess this is probably plan A these days, and Celestial Colonnade, uh, good old plan B, um, the 4 4 Vigilance Flyer uh, can close games out pretty easily. Uh, once Jeskai has uh, gotten to a point in the game where the opponent is top decking uh, against Merfolk, you know, we, uh, if they get us to that point, they usually close out the game pretty quickly because our top decks aren't super powerful typically. But anyhow, um, looks like an easy keep for the opponent. On my side of things, uh, three lands, all blue sources uh, Curse Catcher, Silver Gill, Spreading Seas, Echoing Truth, a mix of interaction and Merfolk. Uh, seems pretty strong to me, so um, I think easy keep for both players. Actually, interesting. The opponent mulligan there. Um, okay, uh, looking at their mulligan, they have four lands with uh, the three blue necessary to get Cryptic online and uh, Lightning Bolt for some early removal. I have to assume the opponent's going to keep this six. Uh, they do. And I'm, I have to say, again, I'm surprised that they didn't keep the uh, the seven that they had. It was double path. Um, I guess Emrakul's kind of a dead card, but double path... Cryptic, you know, if you consider Emrakul a dead card, you know, this is this lines up decently against the other hand. The other hand was Cryptic Path Path, and this is Cryptic Bolt um, with two colonnades instead of one. So perhaps the opponent uh, got the the better six, I guess, especially when you consider the scry. All right, so here's Curse Catcher, uh, played off of Wanderwine Hub, get that uh, tap land into play as early as possible. And we see this uh, opponent drew a path to exile, so the hand's uh, almost identical to the, the first hand, minus Emrakul. All right, they're going to open with a uh, tap Celestial Colonnade. Um, and with no other Merfolk in hand, we don't really have a choice here. Can't play Silvergill Adept yet because I uh, don't have anything to reveal. But I don't feel too bad about dropping a Spreading Seas on this Celestial Colonnade. It'll contribute to... Um, Devotion for Master of Waves later, and of course it'll draw me a card and take him off of his man land. So I'm swinging for one here with Curse Catcher. The opponent will go down to 19. I'll play my second land, drop the Spreading Seas, and hit a second Merfolk, which is nice because, uh, as I mentioned, you need one of those for Silvergill. Opponent drew into an Ancestral Vision, uh, and they're going to play their second uh, tapped Celestial Colonnade and get Ancestral Vision ticking down. All right, on tap, draw Master of Waves. As I mentioned, Spreading Seas, uh, kind of a combo with that guy. So um, no Lords or anything, so I can go ahead and attack with Curse Catcher here um, first. Well, I guess no need. Um, looks like I opted with the opponent tapped out to drop the, the next Spreading Seas, having drawn, having drawn into a couple of Master of Waves. Um, seeing those guys, um, we want to establish as much uh, devotion, especially sort of uninterruptible, uh, unremovable devotion. Spreading Seas tends to stick uh, in this particular matchup. Uh, I guess against Jund, they can use Maelstrom Pulse or uh, Abrupt Decay to get rid of um, Spreading Seas, but against Jeskai, it tends to stay there the whole game. So take him off also off of uh, White, which is really important for them to cast things like Path to Exile, and especially uh, Supreme Verdict requires double White. So that's the idea there. Play Spreading Seas before doing anything and see what land I draw. Or sorry, what card I draw. And I drew the Master of Waves. So swing with the Curse Catcher for one. The opponent will go down to 18. They're going to tick down their Ancestral Vision. And uh, they drew another land. So they're going to be able to slowly get their white mana back online. They just pass. And um, I drew into a Harbinger. Not the best in this matchup, but not dead either. Start off by swinging with Curse Catcher, uh, just like against Jund. Um, you know, just keep just keep pushing damage. Slowly deploy your threats. Um, you see, the opponent has no uh, counter magic that can interact with us here, which is fortunate. Um, with three mana up, however, I was expecting um, something like a mana leak potentially or a spell snare, and uh, I didn't really want to get the Silvergill Adept countered since I was doing fairly well. At the time, I had four devotion on the table. 
uh, including two curse catchers that are just chipping in each turn. And uh, Silvergill can potentially uh, contribute to uh, card advantage as the game goes on, and the opponent tries to grind me out with value like Cryptic Command and Snapcaster Cryptic Command. So I'm just going to play out this Harbinger um, just to get a little bit faster clock going. Opponent cracks uh, their fetch land going down to um, 15. So Curse Catchers uh, doing a good job so far, uh, getting in 4 damage. Very nice. Um, actually, I think it was 4. Let's see. The opponent took with just 1 from this thing and... Um, yeah, I think four from the Curse Catchers. Let's continue here. Okay, so it's turn four for the opponent. Uh, they get to play their fourth land and either leave up mana for Cryptic Command or try to go uh, straight away to Nahiri. I do have an Echoing Truth in hand that can interact with Nahiri if she starts to tick up a little bit too high. I can try to bounce her to reset uh, those loyalty counters. Let's see. All right, so the opponent uh, plays a Plains... And I guess with Lightning Bolt and Path to Exile, he's feeling comfortable enough uh, that he doesn't need to leave mana up for Cryptic Command here. So, um, let's see. I guess as usual, uh, it makes the most sense to start off with attacks. Uh, see the opponent doesn't have uh, triple blue, so we can go ahead and... Um, we can go ahead and... Uh, sorry, attack. We don't have to pause on the start of combat to see if they want to... Uh, tap our team down with a cryptic command start off with attacks because if they want to remove somebody um, you know that's one piece of removal or mana that won't be available for counter spells or for removal for the master of waves in uh, the second main phase so we are going to see a lightning bolt here on a curse catcher that's interesting I guess he wants to open up his cryptic command which makes a lot of sense actually and it makes extra sense having him uh, not play uh, the Steam Vents on tap for Cryptic Command because the Curse Catcher uh, effect is just sitting there on the board. Um, so the control opponent very wisely uh, realized that Curse Catcher would nullify Cryptic Command, so he chose instead to go with the lower casting cost removal options this turn. Removes the Curse Catcher and takes 3 damage. We can see at this point in the game we've already got the opponent uh, maneuvered down to 12 life. Um, and then for my second main, he didn't encounter the Harbinger last turn, so what am I going to go with here? Um, with two Masters, um, I think I'm going to go with Silvergill, revealing a Master. Again, just um, keep chipping in. Keep that card advantage going. Um, drew into a Lord of Atlantis, but I don't want to overextend. He does have that single white mana now and can easily play another one and then a Supreme Verdict. Uh, with a Muta Vault now on the board as well, no need to over-commit uh, things. We see the opponent missed uh, his Ancestral Vision uh, trigger during that upkeep. Didn't, uh, and so he did it there um, well after he drew his card. <laughs> but I, I just remind him it's during the upkeep. But I say no problem. Put, plays a tap Steam Vent, and let's see what, what he's holding up here. Not a whole lot we can see. Um... He could have played that untapped, and that, or, or the island, and left Cryptic Command up. Looks like um, he doesn't feel particularly threatened here. That's, that's what I'm getting from this, this pass here. He does at least have Path to Exile up. So for my turn, I hit another Spreading Seas. And uh, sort of continuing with my... Well, let's, let's see. What do we do first? A lot of options here. Um, if we play a Lord, uh, we're up to 2, 3, and 3. That's swing for 8. If we swing with the Muta Vault, that's 11 total. Um, putting him at, at sort of a precariously low life total uh, takes him off of fetch lands, you know, takes him off of shock lands untapped. So that is an appealing option, swinging for 11 this turn. Um, another option is just to throw another Spreading Seas out there. Um, we can try to cut him off of some of his red mana. Uh, I wouldn't put it past this opponent to be playing main deck Anger of the Gods, and currently they have double red. Um, so let's go ahead and see what the play for the turn was here. Going to try to go for the, uh, the big attack here, except with it not being a lethal attack, I can press the opponent here um, for 8, putting them uh, sort of at a precariously low life total, not at 1, but uh, if they just take this damage, they go down to 4. If they try to interact with the Lord at this point uh, to reduce the damage, I have uh, Spreading Seas in 2nd main. 
So we see the, the path on the Lord. That gets me an island. Not terrible. We see the opponent goes ahead and takes five, going from 12 down to seven. Uh, second main, we'll see the uh, Spreading Seas hitting the Sacred Foundry, taking him off of uh, red and white at the same time. So that's a, a pretty potent Spreading Seas. And we can see that I'm, I'm shutting down uh, two potential threats here in Celestial Colonnade. Drew into another island, and having not played uh, my land for the turn, I'll just throw that out. And uh, opponent's going to resolve Ancestral Vision here. We see a Path to Exile, a land, and a Remand. So decent, but not, uh, not insane, that Ancestral Vision. But the opponent uh, drew into a second Nahiri. So I think it might be time to uh, start deploying these Nahiris. Let's see what the opponent chose to do. Well, just a land and a pass. I guess he's going here. Uh, he has Cryptic with Remand uh, with his six lands, although I do have Curse Catcher to uh, shut one of those off. Drew into a third Master of Waves. So um, let's see what the approach is here. The opponent does have three blue, uh, more than three blue at this point, so we pause to see uh, what the plan is, if he wants to use a cryptic command or what. So we do see that cryptic command. Um, that's why I guess the opponent felt he didn't have to play his Nihiri yet. We're going to see a tap and a draw, which is fine, and I'm going to go ahead and activate my Muta Vault uh, still in the uh, start of combat step. Swing with the Muta Vault for two, and we're going to see a path to exile, which is beautiful from my perspective because... Uh, while Muta Vault is amazing in control matchups, playing around all of their sorcery speed removal, Supreme Verdict and Anger of the Gods, um, at this point, uh, I'm, I was just really worried about Path to Exile for these Masters of Waves, and the opponent burning it uh, to save himself two damage from a Muta Vault is really great because uh, I can get an island to replace it, so I'm not losing any card advantage here, actually gaining card advantage, and... Um, <clears throat> Master of Waves are going to be safe uh, from that particular path to exile once they do come out. Um, again, choosing to play it slow here, I've got uh, 5 damage on the board. It easily becomes um, 8 if I draw any lord off the top. It doesn't even need to be an island walk lord. Opponent's going to crack a fetch at the end step, um, get a second steam vents. And we see they drew into a lightning helix. That's going to buff their life total a little bit. Uh, at this point, they still, let's see, they have still six lands, and we're going to see Nahiri here, um, but we see uh, the effectiveness of taking the opponent off white mana. Needing uh, white mana for Nahiri, the opponent's forced to use their only white source, um, and they're not going to have Lightning Helix up on my turn. They will have Remand up, but I have a Curse Catcher for that, so we're going to see Nahiri. Now, Nahiri could uh, exile one of my creatures if they want, if she wants to. Um, could exile one of my spreading seas. Uh, that's something that uh, her minus two can do. Instead, the opponent uh, chose to discard uh, land and draw a card, and he hit a snapcaster, so that was great value for him. Now here he is trying to get up to uh, eight loyalty uh, and sacrifice herself and go get uh, Emrakul. So let's see. Uh, the opponent played uh, Hallowed Fountain untapped and went down to four. So it looks like he uh, wanted that white mana to uh, to have up for a Lightning Helix. That makes sense, to play around Curse Catcher. So as I mentioned uh, much earlier in the game, I, I do have Echoing Truth to interact with Nahiri if uh, that looks like it's going to be a problem. So go ahead and use that now. Uh, the opponent chooses not to uh, remand that, uh, opting to uh, continue leaving mana up for Lightning Helix. All right, so the opponent is currently at four life and asking if we can go to attacks. Uh, opponent is going to finally use this Lightning Helix here. Take me off of Harbinger of the Tides. He'll go up to seven, but take three, go back down to four. So net zero. And then I'll play uh, Wanderwine Hub and uh, finally deploy one of my many Masters of Waves. Uh, the opponent has... Uh, no mana up for remand at this point, especially not through Curse Catcher. So with all three uh, Spreading Seas and the three Devotion through my creatures, I now have uh, six Elementals on the board. Uh, opponent has nothing in hand to deal with uh, the Master of Waves, but he does have uh, multiple Path to Exiles to grab with Snapcaster. And he just happened to draw into a third Path to Exile. So uh, the opponent just passed it right back to me, and... Um, going to ask to go to attacks. 
Uh, since I have massive overkill with just the elementals, uh, makes sense to attack with those. I'm going to leave the master back just in case the opponent wanted to uh, bring out a snapcaster and just trade with my master of waves. That's that's always a bit of a blowout, trading a 4-drop for a 2-drop, just in blocks. So um, opting instead just to attack with the elementals and my two lesser merfolk here. We're going to see the path. Um, all the, all the um, tokens go away, and the opponent is going to follow up with... Um, Snapcaster into, let's see what mana he's been using so far. We saw white for the path, now now two blue for the Snapcaster. He does have red-white for the uh, Lightning Helix to flash it back, and he's got mana up to pay for a Curse Catcher, so he's going to go up again a little bit with his life total, up to seven. Going to trade with uh, the Curse Catcher. Well, that's fine because we still have uh, this sort of massive three devotion with Spreading Seas on the table. Uh, to reestablish a board, I'm going to try to run out of Master of Waves. Uh, he's going to remand that, which at this point is fine. And you see that we've reached um, some kind of parity. Um, three cards in my hand, three cards in the opponent's hand, four, eight lands on my side, and um, seven lands on the opponent's side. I ch I'm choosing not to play the Harbinger out here because I'm aware of the... Um, Nahiri ultimate. That's that's pretty much what the opponent's uh, representing as far as threats go right now, especially with these Celestial Colonnades shut down. So he brings Nahiri out. He's going to choose to uh, rummage, I guess is the uh, the term. He's going to draw a card and discard. Well, draw, discard a card and then draw a card. And that worked pretty well for him. He discarded a Nahiri, which I'm not sure actually is correct or not. Um, since Nahiri, I mean, it is a... It does follow the Planeswalker rule, so he can't play out two at the same time. But it's a very valuable card. I might have just thrown away the island if I was the opponent, especially didn't, since he didn't play it. I'm kind of curious. Um, so we do see he does play Anger of the Gods in the main. Um, doesn't have a ton of red mana, only has the two available. Um, but that's enough to play one of them. So let's fast forward to my turn. I uh, drew a Curse Catcher. Just going to play out a Master of Waves, get another handful of Elementals, pass to the opponent. It's worth noting that uh, Nahiri does not, uh, cannot exile Master of Waves because she's uh, a red Planeswalker and he has protection from red. So as I mentioned, uh, unless we have multiple Island Walk Lords, I'm not attacking with Master of Waves just because of the possibility of a Vendillion Click or Snapcaster Mage Block, which is a bit of a blowout. So he just went up from 6 to 8 with Nahiri, um, discarding an Island and drawing Vendillion Click. So we see that Nahiri is... Uh, vastly improving the quality of his hand. He's got a lot of great spells right now. Though these spreading seas are doing an excellent job keeping him off of um, access to multiple uh, multiple red, I mean multiple white, multiple red. The opponent uh, burnt an anger of the gods just to get rid of those tokens, which I guess makes sense since he's at a very low life total. He does have the lightning helix in hand uh, to buff his total a little bit. Alright, so we see a Vendillion click in my draw step. Um, just uh, confirm with him that he's targeting me, and uh, not a lot I can do here at instant speed. I'm holding this Harbinger up uh, for uh, Emrakul, especially since this Nahiri is at um, 8. So if we look at this from the opponent's point of view, um, Emrakul can come out next turn and get rid of 6 of my lands, but if I play out a Master of Waves, it's going to get me uh, five tokens. And those guys and some lands are very easy to sacrifice to, um, to Emrakul's Annihilate trigger. Um, so I think the opponent in the end does go with Master of Waves here, just because it's the biggest threat to him. I have to imagine that Kira is uh, a pain in the butt. It's going to um, slow down his Lightning Helixes and Lightning Bolts. And we see that with um, last turn's Anger of the Gods and this turn's Vendillion Click. Uh, he doesn't have any access to uh, mana for these cards right now. So if we try to play out, although Master has protection anyway, so that's not a big deal. I've got the uh, opponent's graveyard open here. Now he's already spent one Snapcaster, but he's got, uh, I'm sure, three more in the deck. I'm going to lead with uh, Kira here. She's a blocker that can deal with, um, that can block Emrakul and save me... Um, 15 damage to prevent just getting burnt out by um, 
these two burn spells. Actually, I didn't know he had these two burn spells in hand, but it just makes sense to play around that because he does have Snapcaster Mages, there's a Lightning Bolt in the graveyard, and he, uh, he's almost certainly got three more Lightning Bolts in the deck and a bunch more Lightning Helixes. So, or Helices. So we'll run out Kira first uh, as potential blocker for uh, Emrakul. And then I thought for a little while uh, about what to do with this Harbinger and the Curse Catcher. I could uh, opt to run the Master of Waves, sorry, Master of the Pearl Trident out here, get through with Island Walk and, and chip Nahiri down to five. Um, the opponent knows I have the Harbinger though, so I wasn't sure if he would still go with the Emrakul or not. Um, in the end, I assumed that he would, only because, you know, uh, the Nahiri, especially with Kira out now, is uh, particularly fragile, and the opponent has spent all the time building her up to eight. To not get that Emrakul out and get me to sacrifice six permanent seems like a, a waste of the Nahiri. So, um, after thinking through uh, all that stuff, I decide in the end uh, to play out a Curse Catcher as an expendable, um, an expendable permanent that I can potentially sacrifice to Emrakul. Um, or as uh, an island walking body next turn when I finally play out my island walk uh, lord. So thinking, thinking, thinking. Um, I apologize to the opponent here because there are turns every now and then uh, that you really need to go into the tank for, and I think I, I think I probably took three or four minutes here. I'm not sure if that would have. Uh, I mean, the opponent could have called me on slow play if it was an actual tournament. Um, the opponent would give me some kind of clock. To, to make my play by. I mean, in the end, there weren't that many decisions. I guess I was, again, determining whether or not to play my Island Walk Lord out right now and take uh, Nahiri down a little bit to prevent her from ticking up. Um, the downside to that, of course, is, uh, is something like a Supreme Verdict. And um, I didn't want to overcommit. That's, that's the uh, number one initiative in our game plan against control decks is to not overextend. Uh, so expecting the opponent to get Emrakul next turn, and with Kira on the board as a blocker, and um, I felt pretty comfortable here, leaving mana up for Harbinger. If the opponent um, has some counter magic for Harbinger, it would be much better, of course, if I had a Cavern of Souls on the board uh, so that he can get in um, through counter magic. But if the opponent had a counter spell for Harbinger of the Tides, I do have a block for Emrakul up with Kira. Now we see Snapcaster Mage, and there is the, there are cryptic commands and remands in the graveyard, so he could have um, countered my harbinger if he if he really wanted to. So here we're seeing the sacrifice of Nahiri. Uh, he gets an Emrakul and attacks, and um, just confirming that uh, the opponent is triggering uh, his well his Emrakul is triggering. Um, I'm going to play this harbinger in response to the trigger. Uh, bounce the Emrakul, which is a really wonderful play. Uh, I guess one of the highlights of the match, certainly of the game, and potentially a reason why the opponent should have taken the Harbinger rather than the Master of Waves. But as I pointed out, he didn't have very many... Well, he had a, a lot of difficult cards to choose from when he played his Vendillion Click. He had the Master of Waves, who would have brought five tokens. Uh, he had the Harbinger, who can bounce Emrakul, and he had the Kira, who protects my creatures from spot removal. Uh, and who can potentially block Emrakul. So he took the Master of Waves as we saw, and now the Harbinger is going to bounce his Emrakul. I guess the opponent thinks that me sacrificing six things is a big deal, but Murpho can run just fine on low mana, so I think in the end I just went with uh, sacrificing six lands, opting to keep all of my creatures as pressure. The opponent's been at a low life total for quite a long time. We drew into a Mutavault, which, as I mentioned earlier, is fantastic against control decks because it uh, avoids Anger of the Gods and Supreme Verdict. And with the opponent at 7, we're really just leaning at this point. So now, uh, with Kira Protection, and we saw the opponent didn't play out a Wrath, which he certainly would have um, if he had the, uh, the card, uh, we can try to uh, close things out with Island Walk here. Play the Mutavault, try to cast the Master of the Pearl Trident. I think we're going to see um, Snapcaster Cryptic here. Get that value from uh, Flashback. Going to counter my team, sorry, counter the spell and tap my team. Makes sense. And the opponent had mana up to uh, pay for Curse Catcher. So an uh, excellent allocation of mana by the opponent that turn. Looks like he drew a Remand. These Lightning, the Lightning Helix and Lightning Bolt are pretty poor. Um, with Kira on the table. Uh, 
very fortunate for me, I drew into another Island Walk Lord who can continue uh, pressuring the opponent. So again, not seeing a uh, Supreme Verdict last turn or an Anger of the Gods, we're going to go ahead and uh, stick with plan A. Uh, I just needed to remind the opponent that his Cryptic is exiled. I was thinking about the possibility of a Snapcaster Cryptic again. Alright, so we've run out uh, Master, of the Way, Master of the Pearl Trident. He's just going to remand that. Draws into a Sulphur Falls. Certainly not amazing at this point in the game. And uh, with no great attacks here, I think I just pass back to the opponent. Well, let's see, actually. Let's pause. This is interesting. Um, I do have the Island Walk Lord, and um, I do have a Flyer, a Kira, who's protecting my team. Both of the opponent's blockers have one power. Um, and, oh, sorry, one toughness, and I, either, if they want to block with either of them, I can uh, trade one of these guys at this point just to get his board chipped away and um, start to attack with more people, even if he counters, more creatures, even if he counters uh, my Island Walk Lord again. So he blocks the Harbinger, he's going to take one, go down to six. Every point is valuable here, and every draw step we give the control deck uh, gives him that much more of an opportunity to draw into Supreme Verdicts and Anger, Angers of the God. So we saw two consecutive land draws from the opponent. We see at this point, these guys here, these spells can't really interact with my board. I guess they can, but it's terrible uh, for card advantage purposes. So I'm going to activate Mutavault here. At this point, I'm still um, expecting him to be able to burn two um, removal spells on my master. And so as a consequence, I think I chose not to attack with the Kira. The Kira doesn't have Island Walk anyway, and I really don't want to trade her for a Vendillion Click. So he says, okay, we attack with the three Merfolk. Then we see a Lightning Bolt that will get countered. And uh, a Lightning Helix follow up to gain the opponent some life up to nine. Uh, he's going to block and trade with the Mutavault. The Mutavault was a 3-3, three, three, so that was pretty smart. Uh, save three damage. And it uh, looks like he's going to take three. Going back down to six, but we see we're uh, really limiting the opponent's uh, options here in his hand. I drew another land. We see he's nowhere near Emrakul Mana. He's got four lands here, four lands here, that's eight. Plays a ninth land. We can close this for now. And we drew a land, but uh, we've got five damage here. Um, trying to play around um, the Vendillion click. Uh, since it's a two-turn clock anyway, uh, no real need to get in with Kira here. Put my island out. Opponent drew a Snapcaster, which I guess makes us want to open up his graveyard again, but I guess we're going to see what he's getting here. Oh, well, so he got an Anger of the Gods, which is uh, certainly reasonable. I'm going to make him pay for that, um, as we always should. And um, <clears throat> Kira will go away, and Master of Waves will stay. So um, Silvergill Adept, I can't cast him, so I'll attack. Um, Sapcaster died to uh, the Anger of the Gods, so things are clear at this point. Master of Waves gets in for two. Uh, seeing uh, how his protection from red can come in really, really handy, especially against these kinds of grindy control decks. Opponent drew a Spell Snare, uh, and yeah, that didn't get him there. So a really long, kind of epic game one. Let's see how game two went. So uh, my hand looks fantastic. I didn't draw any of my counter spells that I brought in from the sideboard. Uh, the opponent, uh, his hand looks really excellent. He's got Spell Snare. Um, to keep me off my 2-drop. He's got Ancestral Vision for turn 1, uh, Lightning Bolt removal, Supreme Verdict for turn 4. Two very good hands. Let's see how it goes. Opponent suspends his Ancestral Vision. I drew a Dispel, which is uh, fantastic because, as I mentioned, uh, the hand had pretty much everything except uh, a counter spell. Looks like the opponent drew a land for the turn, placed his Celestial Colonnade, and with Spell Snare up, with multiple uh, Silvergill Adepts, actually three of them, I've got to try for it here. I will reveal another one. He counters it with Spell Snare. Opponent drew Emrakul, which is a pretty terrible draw. Um, I am whiffing on my lands pretty hard here. Going to try another Silvergill. Uh, this one will resolve and continue to not hit lands. Uh, the opponent continues taking down his Ancestral Visions. Uh, it's going to re resolve soon. Plays a Hallowed Fountain tapped. He's getting all of his mana online at sort of no cost here because I've got no pressure. Attack with Silvergill. Play out another Silvergill and r just trying to draw land here. And absolutely just not getting anything. 
So we've drawn six cards uh, since the opening seven and haven't seen a land. I started with double blue, and uh, opponent is going to resolve Ancestral Vision and is starting to run away with things here, we can see. So um, can play his fifth land this turn and just pass. We're going to see an upkeep, uh, sorry, draw step Vendillion click. The opponent gets to see what I'm working with, uh, and he says, wow. I say, yeah, no lands, and he's going to take something, I think, probably Kira, since that card set him back quite a lot last last game. So he takes Kira. Uh, I go to I get to draw another card after he exiles Kira. Actually, if I was him, I might have just let me keep what I had since I, um, I'm, I don't have any lands to play anything. But it, it's reasonable for him to take Kira. Eight cards in hand. Um, opponent's going to block one of my Silver Gills and take two. I'll follow up with a Harbinger just as beats. Want to play around counter spells. I don't really care if he counters the Harbinger. Opponent goes down to 14 from a fetch land. Um, probably just going to play a land and pass here, I would think. Or possibly Supreme Verdict. There's a Nahiri, and she's going to draw a card and discard Emrakul. Or discard Emrakul and then draw a card. Just fast forwarding through this. Continuing to not hit uh, anything here. Going to attack uh, Nahiri with, uh, after playing a Lord, trying to just take her out, but uh, the opponent bolts my Lord, so she'll only go down uh, from 6 to 2. Opponent's drawing land at this point, but he's got enough in his hand, and uh, with Nahiri on board, um, has to feel pretty good in this spot. Alright, so I drew a Muta Vault, which is kind of a, a slap in the face, because I, <laughs> I still can't play a spell and leave up Dispel. So I'll swing with my creatures. Um, that's what I like to do. Actually, thinking about it a little bit. The opponent can activate Celestial Colony to block at this point, which is pretty terrible. Uh, I'll play a Lord. Uh, we're going to see Cryptic Command. He showed me that he had Supreme Verdict by mistake. He's going to uh, counter and tap my team. And with only Muta Vault, there's nothing I can really do about that. Opponent discards an island and draws an Ancestral Vision. Again, seeing the value of Nahiri. Now there's a Supreme Verdict taking care of my board, plays an Ancestral Vision, and we'll just try to swing with the uh, Muta Vault. Hit Nihiri, goes down to four, still not drawing lands. <laughs> Opponent draws a Lightning Helix, plays, uh... so I drew a Relic, it's kind of interesting, um, but not really. I mean, at this point, I could have scooped. Uh, I mean, he could have any number of things. He's got stuff in his graveyard. He can uh, Snapcaster Cryptic very easily at this point. He can Snapcaster Bolt. He's got a Lightning Helix in hand, as we can see in the replay. Mahiri is going to keep moving up toward 8, and the opponent has 3 Celestial Colonnades to attack and block with. Uh, draws another Nahiri. I'm going to crack my uh, Relic here, and I drew another Relic. Can't get any lands. I had an amazing hand uh, this game. I drew Negate and Dispel. If I had only gotten a second blue source, I think I would have... Uh, I definitely had the tools to compete in this game. But at this point, I'm 20 cards deep, and we see after my opening 7, I, I only hit a Muta Vault in 13 draws. And it happens sometimes, you know? So I'm not complaining. It, it was just a, it was a little bit frustrating to play through it. All right, so the opponent has Nahiri on 8. Grabs Emrakul, uh, gonna crack the relic, because why not? Um, still didn't draw land, and nothing I can do at that point, so I scooped it up. Go ahead to uh, game three. Alright, um, my opening hand looks good. I let him know that I'll keep. Uh, his hand, a little light on lands, but he's got uh, interaction, he's got counter spells, Vendillion Click. Um, he will need another red for Anger of the Gods, but he's gonna have time for that stuff, I think. My hand has Silver Gill for card advantage, uh, Negate uh, to protect my guys. Draws another Path to Exile. I'm sure he wanted to see a land on that draw step. Okay, so for my, t my turn, it looks like I drew a Muta Vault, and uh, with, with no real action on turn 3 right now, uh, I feel safe running out the Muta Vault. I'm going to play Silver Gill, Revealing Master of Waves, and I drew into a Curse Catcher, which is nice in the early part of the game uh, against Control, having a Curse Catcher out. Uh, can be quite good. We see the opponent is having sort of a identical problem that I had uh, last game. Totally uh, backed up on his mana. 
So um, I drew into another land. Uh, not amazing since I already had four between the two on the board and the two in my hand. Um, but I've got enough to work with in my hand here. Uh, seeing the opponent is a little bit low on land. I'm going to run the Curse Catcher out first before I even make a land drop. Um, not much he can do about that here. He could have pathed in response to that, but I don't think he wants to burn a path on my Silver Gill Adept. I'll follow up with Minamo and uh, activate the, the uh, Muta Vault here. Try to push as much damage as I can, and the opponent choosing not to uh, not to path the Muta Vault. Which is an interesting decision, I think. I guess maybe he doesn't want to ramp me, but... Okay, we see he continues not drawing land, so a little bit of karma uh, for that win last game where I was stuck on land. We are going to see the path here. Strange timing. I guess he knows that I bring in some counter spells. I uh, hit an Aether Vial, but with all these lands, that's a little bit unnecessary. Um, and with, with the opponent so low on mana, I think it might be time to uh, put my foot on the gas here. So play out one of my Masters of Waves, swing for one with the uh, Curse Catcher. See the opponent has another path that he can use on this uh, Master of Waves. Uh, I, I rushed a little bit there, uh, but before the opponent's draw step, I just uh, I, I run out the Aether Vial and, and apologize that I forgot about that. So we are going to see Path on Master of uh, Waves. Uh, opponent has Mana to pay for Curse Catcher. Continues to not hit lands. Aether Vial will tick up to one. I'm going to play a Cavern of Souls here. Uh, get my second Master of Waves onto the table. Um, leaving up Mana for Negate, opting not to get in with Muta Vault this turn. Uh, swing for one. Um, okay, the opponent plays his Arid Mesa and passes back to me. Curse Catcher slowing down this Anger of the Gods uh, quite beautifully. Uh, we have an Aether Vial with a Harbinger on uh, Harbinger in hand, Aether Vial on two. Uh, that's going to allow us to do end step uh, activation to uh, keep applying pressure through uh, something like a board wipe. Now we're going to activate Muta Vault and attack with everybody except Master of Waves. What does the opponent have here? He's going to crack his Arid Mesa, um, paying three life to get an untapped Sacred Foundry. We're going to see a Vendillion click here. Uh, I think looking at my hand might have been wise for him to look at his own hand and discard one of those things in the hopes of drawing another land. The opponent uh, instead goes with looking at my hand. I took a moment to think about whether I wanted to get this Harbinger out onto the board. Uh, but in the end, the negate is very valuable as well, and I wanted to put the decision to the opponent. See what was more important for him. Okay, and um, with him, uh, with Anger of Gods in the hand, uh, he probably wants to get rid of this negate. So he does. Um, he's going to block the Muta Vault and take 5, going all the way from 11 down to 6. Does draw that fourth land. I think we're going to see a Supreme Verdict here. Um, but end step, uh, Harbinger to keep applying pressure, as I mentioned. We draw another Master of Waves. I'm going to probably just swing for two with the Harbinger. And uh, no reason not to run this Master of Waves out here. Unless he has another Supreme Verdict, it's probably going to be pretty hard for him to deal with uh, all of these threats. So we see a Lightning Bolt, but uh, instead uh, the opponent goes with Anger of the Gods, getting rid of everything except Master of Waves. But uh, he's two power, and the opponent's at three life, so a lot of pressure. We hit an Island Walk Lord, who uh, we can just go ahead and uh, drop on the board and swing for three. The opponent with a Lightning Bolt in hand, but having been backed up on mana the whole game, uh, didn't have red mana up uh, to deal with the Lightning Bolt. He did have Spell Snare, but the Aether Vial uh, was clutched there, uh, letting me get this guy on the board through any counter magic. And uh, I guess the Caverns, Cavern of Souls had my back as well. So, uh, game one, uh, really epic. Uh, we managed to eke it out in the end. Game two, I got a little bit mana screwed um, through 20, 20 cards drawn, only hit uh, two islands and a muta vault. This game, uh, the opponent was backed up for a couple turns on his mana, and that really set him back. Uh, he did his best. He played a lot of spells. Uh, we saw two paths, an Anger of the Gods, a Supreme Verdict, and a Vendillion Click, uh, but we had the pressure uh, to close things out that game. So uh, this is one of the better matches uh, that I've played in quite a while. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please share any comments you might have, any observations about the play. Um, it was interesting for me uh, in the replay to see what my opponent actually was holding because, you know, during the actual match, uh, you always try to play around counter spells, around Snapcaster, but of course they don't always have it. So um, the replay is very valuable to see, you know, what the opponent could actually have and what they actually did have. So uh, thank you again. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.